Think about it. These things were charcoal blued. Before they went into the charcoal blue, which is kind of a heat oven bluing process, the way they degreased these things was they dipped them in boiling gasoline by today's standards in OSHA. Think about that. Boiling gasoline. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Batchack JW having some coffee this morning. And uh, in a way, I guess I should say something. <laughs> so uh, thanks for coming around. We got a, a couple of uh, videos out uh one on the main channel, uh, which is old news to most of you because you guys are tuned in here to the radio show. And a lot of times uh, I break the news first to you uh, before any kind of thing hits the main channel, obviously. So, um, but yeah, recently it just went on there. I did a video on my Cimarron Model P, the uh, 3840 made by uh, Uberti. So having a little bit of coffee and um, I guess we'll talk about it the yeah that model p uh, 3840 I'm, I'm actually curious because I have the frontier models and those those two uh, or one is definitely the frontier model the other one is the uh, rooster shooter I'm not sure which which gun they decided to strip all the finish off of. If they did it to a Model P or just one of their cheap Frontier models, it'd probably be cheaper to do it for the Frontier model. But there again, my question is, what makes it the Frontier model to the Model P? Um, the Model P did seem to be, uh, the fit and finishes on it is definitely a little bit better. Uh, not by a whole lot, but it is better than, say, the uh, Frontier model. The Frontier model that I had, I actually did a lot of work to that gun. I, uh, As I stated in the uh, video, I actually took um, some really light, really light. I didn't want to go too crazy because you don't want to break through the, uh, the surface of the hardening. But I took like an emery file or something and actually just cleaned it up a little bit. There was a lot of burrs and stuff on the bottom part of the frame where the cylinder rotates through and any of those little burrs rub on the, the cylinder you're gonna get these weird strange scratches ahead of the cylinder uh, ahead of the locking uh, notches in there now I always remember seeing those not uh, scratches on some some guns and I thought what the heck does that um, it's really it's the uh, the you know the, the insides of the frame some burr or something rubbing uh, against the bluing there now, granted, it's a revolver. I mean, that's inherent to a revolver. That's just what's going to happen. Uh, you can't avoid that. So that's just what it is. <laughs> so anyway, um, what uh, what I wound up talking about mostly in that video was the fact that they changed the clicks. It's no longer four clicks. Um, so it, it's now like this three clicks so it's different and uh it's funny i'm actually reading a comment right here and one comment says uh, uh bold purchase given that ammo for 3840 is expensive and hard to find does it have the two or four click hammer um clearly he hadn't watched the entire video because <laughs> i explain all that I, I talk about all that stuff in the video uh, interesting um but I was talking about the clicks in it, and I, that was one of the first things I noticed was like, oh, okay, this doesn't have the four clicks like they used to. I wonder what's going on. And then as I, you know, as I messed with it and owned it more, and I wasn't understanding the entirety of what is going on with this thing, uh, especially when I was getting like light strikes and misfires and all kinds of hangups uh, because of that firing pin s system in it. That firing pin system that they have in it is absolute garbage. I hope, and, and funny enough, I actually talked to uh, tailors, uh, and because they have it too, and they're cattlemen. Uh, I told them about it. I, I expressed, I said, you know, I know, because they all get the guns from the same place. It doesn't matter if it's a Cimarron or a Taylor's. They all come from Uberti, Italy, Pieta, whatever. They're the same company. It's the same stuff. It, it, so uh, they're all doing it. Uh, they're just importing them. And I don't know, whatever. they Maybe they put some final touches, or maybe they put them together. I don't know. So... But uh, anyway, yeah, I was just saying that that that's that's got to go. That that whole system has got to go. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, that's the uh, video up there now. And um, of course, been doing the um, 
a couple of parts on the uh, coloring vintage Colt grips. I like doing videos like that. Those are my favorite kind of videos to do. When uh, it's like something like the, like either like doing it yourself or finding a cheaper way to do it or enhancing something from a factory that literally caught, that charges you a, a great deal of money and they're supposed to produce some high-end products. Like this is dating all the way back to where uh, when I actually first sold a, cup, a set of my grips, and that was actually to Santee over there at the uh, Ghost Riders. Uh, when I actually sold him a pair, I really did not want to sell my grips. Um, I didn't want to because I didn't feel uh, some like I didn't feel like like somebody should. I, I didn't feel like they were meant for sale. I, I had no intentions ever on selling them, but people wanted them, and I thought I hope I don't know if they're good enough to where somebody would be. Uh, satisfied if they purchased them and what they got in their hand uh, because I did it for solely for myself to just satisfy an itch that I had that I wanted to do I've always been just somebody that looks at something and says I can make that and if I can if I feel like I'm confident enough to where I can actually make that and design it and make it I'll do it uh, the same thing with my Freddy gloves uh, right when I bought that model and a lot of you, if you, um, some of you go way back with this channel when I was uh, able to do a lot of those uh, daily vlog videos and everything. Um, yeah, I had, uh, I had ordered that glove from NECA. And when I got it, I looked, the more I looked at it, I said, the more I can make this thing. So that's when I started the uh, adventure on trying to make one. And I did. And so, and I actually sold one of those too. But, uh, you know, just when I was making those grips, and that's, that's where it comes from me, it's like I start getting, like, curious on how do I either make one or make it better. And that's what I did with those grips. Um, now, I, I just did a part three on those coloring vintage grips, and this was actually regarding the, uh, the, um, the ones that I got from Triple K. I did actually finally get them in, and I opened them up. And I want to say this now, uh, you know, say this uh, in this video, you know, you get what you pay for, but it wasn't what I was thinking it was going to be. Um, they have yet, uh, it answered my question right there. Nobody has yet to recapture that, that look that they were doing back in the day. And this was even on other revolver grips and plastic grips uh, or poly resin, whatever grips they were making. They haven't done that marbling again or that off colored like where you you can tell it's like hey that's got like something else in it it's like brown orange uh, maybe a darker brown it had a, a variety of colors it seemed to have like brown black orange a darker brown it seemed to have all these colors mixed up in them and if it depends on which you know company it was it seemed to be like that especially like the uh some of the old school like Walther PPK grips I saw. In fact, some time ago, long ago, I had saw in a pawn shop, it was a Maruzin or a Maruchin or something like that. Um, a Maruzin or a Maruchin something. Um, it was a PPK in 32. It was, the only reason it was missing its rear sight, but they had those old original looking grips and they wrapped around the back. It was really cool. I really, I should have grabbed that gun, but I just, at the time, they didn't have the money and the fact it was missing that sight, that kind of really, I don't know, I don't want to shell out a lot of money for something that I, I know I have to actually like, you know, put money into it and fix it or something. So anyway, but, uh, you know, they had those grips on it. Uh, so when I got these ones from Triple K, what I wanted, I ordered them in orange, uh, orange brown. That's what I ordered them in. Uh, they, I, I remember, too, when I, I set the order in, I said, okay, 37 bucks. You know, that's not bad. I'll go ahead and do that. You know, so I ordered them. They call it, now this is pre, before I bought the the gun and all that and I was this is I was just getting everything in line because I was certain I was gonna find that new classic one that I wanted at, at the show I was certain I was gonna find it but I didn't but anyway so I was ordering all this stuff in preparation to um, you know right when I got it out you know because I'm impatient I wanted the thing yesterday um, I I just want to be able to start uh, building it or, or you know taking you know 
popping it open and, and get get it going. So uh, that's just the way I'm at. I'm very impatient. Um, so I ordered the grips, and then they called me like the next day. I actually got a missed call from them, so I called them back. Uh, I recognized the number uh, out of San, Di uh, San Diego, I think it's, it is, or wherever Triple K is, somewhere in there in California. I um, uh, I called them, and I said, hey, uh, you know, I missed the call. What, you know, what's going on? And they said, oh, yeah, um, what you ordered, and their, their website's really weird. They said, what you ordered was a orange-brown screw, so we're, we're trying to figure out what you want. And I said, well, I want the orange brown panel grips for the Colt 1911A1, you know, the one that you have listed there. And they said, I said, I want an orange brown. They told me, oh, okay, um, if you want it in that color, it's $30 to change the color from black because they're originally in black. Give and take at the time with all those circumstances, and I mean, mind you, I, you know, was thinking, well, I'm not going to get these grips anywhere else. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, just for the setting the record straight right now, I don't regret getting the grips. The grips are fine. I like them. Uh, they turn out great. Um, there will be something else I'll, I'll stick in my collection. I'm just like that. I'm not like a, uh, I don't, uh, I collect these old things. Anything vintage and old, I feel like it's such a, it's a market that's disappearing by the day. As everything is just turning into black and tactical and modern, and I'm just clinging to my revolvers, my old GI styled 1911s and stuff that they're just not making anymore. I'm just I'm clinging harder to those and just like man, because this whole world's turning into this like other the world of firearms is turning into just this mass produce, you know, stuff that's just coming out. There's no artwork into it. There's no soul in building them. Nothing. It's just yeah, that is what it is. So I, I, I kind of cling to these things because, um, you know, it's one thing, just remember, it's just, you got to think, it, it's still nice that a company's still reproducing something like this that you can you can get that is a, a throwback to the old grips. So when I got them and I show them in a video, they're clearly just, uh, they're like the brown, like, nylon plastic uh, World War II reproduction grips that you get, only they're just a little bit more reddish brown or reddish orange color. So I um, I was kind of like, wow, I, okay, that just proves to me they're not reproducing the actual like marbled look that the other ones used to have. So I took them, and I got them right here. I'm actually looking at them. Um, I, I splattered them with a dark brown spray paint. And then I, I went over it with a mat, uh, like a, a satin uh, clear coat. Uh, so that now they actually look really good, if I may say so myself. Uh, they actually look good. They look like that that marbling that I was going after. They gives them that that off color where at a distance it looks kind of like a light brown but then you get them up close and that's what I really like. To get up close to them, you're like, wow, those are indeed different. They are different, and that's what I like. I like different stuff. I like stuff that perhaps nobody else is going to really have because either I created it or uh, did something unique to it. It's going to be different. Uh, same with my, uh, you know, my yellow ivory grip style grips that I put on my six guns. Each one of those that I pour, that I make and shape and and age and do all these stuff to it, they're all different. Each one, each set is different. No set's going to be alike. So that's what I got there, and uh, you know, as you hear uh, right there, uh, you know, I got the uh, the clip of uh, that's um, Ken Hackathorn talking about how they made the old 1911s back then. That actually shocked me, uh, what he said about the uh, the process and everything. It's just crazy, but. Anyhow, um, also before I close this one out, I'd like to thank, um, I believe it was um, Joe P. I believe uh, you were the one that mentioned that you can actually find that uh, the, um, the classic model on Cheaper Than Dirt right now, and it's fairly uh, cheap, so well, it has cheaper than dirt. I actually, I don't know, I'm still wondering, I may just buy it and... Uh, you know, go from there. I may buy it and, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to have to sell something and I might buy it and just uh, see how that turns out. But I'm definitely going to have to sell something 
if I, if I do take it on. I'm going to sell something or a couple of something. <laughs> so just to have it because I think it's neat. Plus, it's got a national match barrel in it. And it, I think it would make a really cool um, cool pistol. But, again, uh, I'm only if I could sell some stuff. I think i got to sell some more stuff. So lighten the load a little bit more. Since we've added a couple of things, we have to remove some things. That's just the way I go. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, enjoy your weekend. And uh, thanks for tuning in.